Previously on Fool's Gold Sands. So if we side with the bug creatures, we get passage across the sand sea, but everybody in the two towns is still going to become their food. I don't really like that. I turn to the big bug. We'll find the thief. Goody. You hear a screech, and uh, it looks like you've, like, pinned his hand down to the table. Bill. Bill. Nice to meet you, Bill. Is it? It's a powerful name. Hi. I need an item from the queen. And we're going to go burn these bugs. Uh, But she does move. Uh, She was uh, nesting on an old altar. And on top of that altar is a brilliant red mace. You're lighting a match. And then I will just throw it into the muck. Go, go, go. He, uh, Bill moves to put the the mace. Where will you go now, weird Bill? Mm, Away. Good news. We found what was taking and killing your men, and they are gone now. Oh, also, we got a jar. You can keep it. Ah, uh, are, are you sure? Well, yeah, because you said that your people were like hungry and stuff. You remember us now. And then, Cor, you notice that note as you set it aside that was with the dinner. Mm-hmm. Its letters start to shift. It reads, "Protect my weapon." Very well. <laughs> comes. Ta-da. It's brekkie time. Brekkie time. Delicious yeah. smells uh, reach your rooms from below brekkie. in the inn. Core rises from his bed. It's <laughs> brekkie time. Yeah, exactly. Like a fucking vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, six, seven foot tall demon built like a brick shit house just levitates on his ankles <laughs> on, yeah. on to 90 degrees. You guys head down for breakfast. No, where... no, 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 no. You because... do not? Okay, sorry. Rooster, what do you do? Yeah, w- Rooster is sleeping Outside of Cor's door. Oh my god, like a dog? <laughs> you like a dog. Okay, so so Cor, you open your door. Okay, probably but accidentally. There's... Step on... <laughs> you, yeah. you step on Rooster. <laughs> ah, oh. <laughs> what are you doing there? Morning. I was sleeping. Have you been there all night? Yeah. Well, after the party. Did they not give you a room? Uh, I, wa- I wanted to sleep in your room, but then you said that you wanted to be alone, so I decided to sleep outside. Anyway, my back hurts. I'm like, get something. <laughs> okay. Snap. I'm hungry. Me too. After that completely normal interaction, you, two yeah. of you head downstairs <laughs> to find Nelthor already sitting at a table, waving the two of you over, and he's already ordered food for you. Guys. Oh, that's really? nice. So there's two big old plates of eggs and bacon, probably bug bacon or something, I don't know. Eggs, <laughs> eggs, bacon, and bread. Hell yeah, the skin of my enemy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an awfully crunchy kind of bacon. Uh, it tastes like we're, fish for some reason. We're going to say it's, it's an extra <laughs> crunchy bacon that tastes like fish. <laughs> made of bugs. It made of bugs. Made of bugs. We sit down. Uh, thank you for ordering for us now for. Oh, no concern at all. How was your evening? What did you have a good rest? Yeah. It, it was good, yes. Doormats are very comfy. Are they now? Yeah. I've never tried it yet. Maybe I will. Give it a try. Your back hurts, but you got you figure out with your bones how to snap them properly, so it's all good. Oh, they're well past snapping, thank you. <laughs> the last back pain I had was a few uh, millennia ago. Aw, oh, lucky. Yeah, it comes with benefits, I always say. Are you ready for our journey to Kikuma? That was capital, right? Yeah. Yes, the big capital city. Yes. Yes, I'm very excited to get on our way. Oh, I'm very excited. Why are you excited? I thought you didn't know where you were going to go. Well, I've never ridden on whatever thing they're using to get us there, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, that is exciting. Do you know what it is? I believe they called it some kind of train, but... What is, are you... is that? What is it? Well, I'm not sure. That's why I'm so excited. I do like training. Is it like that? Could be what, a big beast. Maybe there's combat involved. Maybe there's a big creature we could ride. That would also be good. Oh. Be excited if there was actually a big <laughs> creature. Perhaps we have to fight it. Oh, I'm so excited now! Anyways, uh, you guys finish your breakfast. You guys head out to um, a big kind of like cargo terminal where they've got a bunch of crates and stuff loaded up. Because As they mentioned, they have a bunch of like silver and I think gold ore that they mined here that they got to get back to the capital. You see... A large uh, vehicle there Ooh. at the station. It looks like the top of like a tr- like a train, like a metal train cart, and the bottom of a boat, like a catamaran that has like two sleds 
Or like, oh, you used a word I don't know. <sighs> like a pontoon boat. Pontoon boat. That's also a word I okay, don't know. Okay, okay, okay. It's a, it's a, it, the boat has a flat bottom uh-huh. with two canoes strapped to the bottom. Oh, are the canoes inflated or are they like... They're made of wood. Okay. Ooh, it's like two Jessica. Yes. And there are uh, two train carts. Front one is for the passengers and the one behind it is full of cargo. And then what's driving it? Like, is you, there a locomotive thingy, whatever the hell they call it? It looks like a carriage, but currently there's no animal strapped to it yet. Okay. So it's got like the, you know, the long... God, I don't know my carriage terms. The long stick in the middle that the animals get attached to. Oh, okay. okay. So it's not the nothing's there. And uh, yeah, you guys head over to the terminal. Everybody's busy loading up, and eventually Linda notices you guys approaching as she's there coordinating the loading. She says, "Oh, morning! Finally decided to join us, huh?" Howdy do. Good morning, Linda. Uh, how how dude doodly good do. Um, we're just getting loaded up here, and then you guys can hop in the front, and we'll be on your way over to the capital city. Great. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. You got your weapons on you? Always. Yes. Perfect. These things are prone to get ambushed and all that stuff, so, you know, you're going to be working while you're on here. Oh, don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah, I was just about to say, are we going to meet some bad guys? I figured you boys wouldn't mind. By the way, what is her name? Pardon? He gestures to the train boat. Mm -hmm. What is her name? It could be a boy. Oh, um, pardon me. What is his, her, slash, theirs name? (laughs) Well, I don't know about its pronouns, but uh, that's the Beulah train, and you'll be taking that over to the capital. Get yourself some board. It's going to be hot and sweaty in there, and it's going to be a few other passengers. It's really all your, your only option. You keep threatening us with a really good time, dude. I'm never hot and sweaty. <laughs> well, perfect. You can be the air conditioning. We'll strap a fan to you. <laughs> <laughs> Stand behind the open window and just blow in, blow in the cold air. <laughs> it's just on your back, like, blowing behind your ears, like, <gasps> oh, that sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking wet. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, eventually, um, you see a, another person near the front of the train. It's a tall human with a name tag reading Deeb. They look like the train conductor because they got that they got that official hat that says train conductor on it. Fancy right. man. You gonna be with one of the passengers today? What do you say? What? You gonna be passengers today? Right on train today? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> no, no, I'll, what? Let's just speak in his language. <laughs> <laughs> In the language? In the language. Cor's gonna go sit down. Yeah. <laughs> He's sleeping. Speak of the language. Yeah. You da habit da 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 uh, I failed to make Cor kill a man today. I'll try again another time. Okay. <laughs> He's already killed a man. Yeah, reset. Yeah, I need one per session. <laughs> You guys get on the train, including Nelthor. I don't even know if Core registers that Nelthor was going to be there until he looks over and he's like, ah, it's just Nelthor's just directly next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone so quiet and sneaky? Oh, well, uh, I don't have a lot of, um, I, I guess, weight to throw around. <laughs> I'll, I'll wear a bell. Good idea. I'm joking. Mm-hmm. Inside the train, it is pretty hot and stuffy. Uh, it's a metal tube in the desert. Yeah. It's hot. The windows are open, there's a little bit of a breeze, and there's like another handful of passengers. There's like a handful of mine workers that are like changing shifts now, so they're going to go back home in the city and new people are going to come replenish them. Um, there's also a bunch of empty supply, like empty supply crates being loaded into the back, along with a lot of full supply crates of gold and silver. So you're sitting with Nelthor and nobody else, but you're surrounded by all sorts of other people. They're minding their own business, nobody's really minding you guys. And then um, Deeb gets on the, gets ready to drive. And just sits by the front, kind of like, you know, carriage style on the on the top of the train. And says, all right, everybody, hold on to your butts. You hear Firm. Him. Hmm? <laughs> Firm. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just evaluating his cheeks. Firm. Um, and you see all the passengers that have ridden this train before, which is everybody but you. When he says that, they do actually, like, fucking brace themselves. <laughs> And they're all very excited about this. Yeah, they're getting really excited about it. (laughs) Yeah. And then um, you see Deeb throw what looks like some kind of bait to the front of the train and also make a bit of a whistling noise. And then the ground starts to rumble under you, um, which gets more intense as time passes. (laughs) You guys are getting more excited. The passengers are getting more like like tense. It's like... (laughs) Um, and then the train suddenly just fucking shoots forward as uh, half a dozen bulets come out of the ground, biting onto the bait and the harness in the front of the train, and pull it forward into the desert. 
Put your hands up. Makes it funner. <laughs> I don't think Cora's doing that. I think yeah. he's holding on for dear life. And he's just like, ah. <laughs> Welcome to the Beulah train. Yeah. Doot, doot. The Beulah train takes off. Half the people are just like thrown across the cabin as this thing accelerates from zero to at least 50 in like a split second. How does Nell 4 do? Uh, yeah, he catches himself. Okay. He's also quite thrown off by this, um, but he doesn't weigh as much, so it's easy for him to keep steady. But after the initial shock, you're off, sprinting through the desert. And you can see that actually this train's design is really efficient for the desert so far. Like, you guys are moving at a brisk pace, and the Beulahs, they are, they're hauling. Wait, I have an important question. Yes. Jessica is on the train, right? Jessica would be in the cargo hold. Good. We would never forget Jessica. Well, if there, if Jessica wasn't coming with, I have to make a whole bit about him saying goodbye and crying. So, <laughs> and I'm not prepared don't, for that. Don't today. worry, we'll get to that. Do bullets run on top of the sand, or do they swim? Like they I imagine swim sharkies. like dolphins. Oh, okay. So they're like hopping up and down ah. of like the um, the sand. And um, it's really just like half a dozen sand dolphins pulling this thing forward. A good amount of time passes. I mean, this journey is going to take you guys like probably 24 hours. And everybody, you know, getting they're getting themselves organized again. They're getting themselves seated again. Discussions are popping off. People are now chilling. And Deeb's also coming through, making sure nobody died. <laughs> Eventually, Nelthor strikes up a conversation with you guys and says, So, have you ever been through this part of the desert? Maybe. I don't know. I hear it's uh, supposed to be quite lively. Like party-wise? Well, I mean, the environment. It is called the Rip Sands, so I'm quite excited to see what that will be. Oh, yeah. They said it was really hard to navigate, that even Jessica couldn't navigate it. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited for that part. Hopefully I don't get motion sick. Oh. Can you do that? Motion sickness? Yes. Awful. Yes. Oh. Oh. Mm. What if I ride it? Like, ride the train? You are. No, no. And then he, like, gets up and buckles. And there's a window behind him, right? If it's, like, a train? Yeah, there's windows all around you. Sweet, I'm going to open the window. Okay, you open the window. And I would like to climb onto the top of the train. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Rooster, what are you doing? (laughs) Well, I want to ride it. You are already riding it. You are currently, this is called riding the train. Yeah, but it's, like, a giant sand sailor. I can't pass up this opportunity. There's no sail. You could pass it up and just stay inside. He thinks for a bit. Yeah, but I don't want to, so <laughs> I'd like to try. This seems like something Rooster would do. It's a giant sand sailor. Okay. Give me a climb check, Rooster. Okay. I'm I not wanna... going to be... The... This is your problem. Okay. I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm pointing Thank at Core, not my... Like... I, I want to be... I mean, as as Rooster is climbing out the window, I think Core is turning himself, himself around in the, se- in the seat. If he, like, if he detaches and just goes off the off the side, I want to try at least catch him. Okay, so you can ready yourself. Yeah, because Core is just like, 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 maybe let's not do this. He remembers that the uh, the promise he made to Boris. Boris to try and at least keep you intact until you get to the city. Yeah. he's. At, I mean, Rooster is like halfway out of the window. He's like, don't worry about it. Believe me, it's going to be... Awesome. And he rolls a 19. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You you just reach out the window, brace yourself, and jump up onto the roof. Cool. So Rooster does weigh a lot, so I'm assuming that helps him anchor himself to this. The wind is not going to push you over. Yeah. You have a decent footing up there. Though, that being said, it is a little shaky. Yeah. But it's quite large. Like It is large, but it's a little shaky. How is it up here? Hot and windy. (laughs) Probably feels amazing. I mean, honestly, it does. It feels like you're on the biggest sand surfer. Gunning it through he's the desert. He's going full Titanic mode. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to the front. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kicking the world. <laughs> yeah. And you also see that the front of the train, there's like a little, you know, I'm picturing it kind of like the old Western carriages where the train conduct, no, sorry, where the carriage driver sits yeah. kind of on top of the carriage. Yeah. yeah. So you actually see Deeb at the front of the train. Yeah. Oh, it, I want to make my way there. It, yeah. Sure. In the interior of the train, because you can, he can cork and hear Rooster's yeah, footsteps. Yeah, you, you just look up and it's like, doom, doom, doom. Yeah, doom, so doom. now Cor is going to be traveling to the front to Deep, too, because he knows that's where Rooster is going. And, and there is like, a ladder there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cor is just like, okay, it's time to get down. You've had your fun. Let's go. No, this is a great spot. And no. Deep turns around and notices you, Rooster, and it's like, what are you doing over here? What are you doing on top of my train? Uh, why wouldn't I be on this train? Because w- it's, not, it's not safe up here. you got to be down there in your basket. I was seat. invited here. God, just, By who? I just figured out who the hell he sounds like. He sounds like Boomhauer from King of the Hill. <laughs> I don't know that He person. doesn't know that. Yeah. I don't know King of the Hill. 
<laughs> I'm You're doing I'm fine. Gonna, I'm just going to keep doing what like I'm doing. Somebody guys. else is getting is getting a real kick out of it. I mean, Rooster's like standing up straight, letting all the wind and stuff, which probably is awesome. And then he kind of like gets down and kneels down and then he lays his stomach onto the train and then he just kind of holds it and then he can kind of like move up. And now I'm guessing the train conduct conductor's head is like right here pretty much you're pretty right much there right at his head mm-hmm. so he's like no this is better i like it here all right just don't get any funny ideas <laughs> as he's like going like nah, like <laughs> going out to like nom a little bit and he's like no wait all he's right. just holding his mouth open to catch bugs in it like <laughs> 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 or, or like your tongue is hanging out like a dog yeah i i also think that rooster would be just asking all the questions about the the bullets and in fact the dude's happy to share yeah. he does say everything in like a machine gun pace like machine gun redneck pace. I like to think Rooster's catching up, like, nice, like keeping nice. up with it. <laughs> yeah. You know, are we right? These babies were 50 miles an hour. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you, you guys are nerding out over bullets and trains and boats and sand sailing. Car, you want to come up? No, I, I'm i fine. I think I'm okay in, in here. And other people are just like, no, keep him down here. He's nice and cold. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, you go. Go uh, freeze the people. Yeah, Cor, you're actively making this cabin more enjoyable for everybody just by <laughs> your presence. That's nice. I don't know if he really, I don't know if he's really like registered that he's just existing. Well, I mean, people have said it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's he's like, uh, oh, okay. Come, he comes back. Oh, come back like to Nelthor, like your seating? So, or? Yeah, I guess to the people who are calling him back now. Oh, sure. I mean, everybody's just like, ah, oh, yeah, so much better. when he's <laughs> They're just, they're chilling. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Nelthor actually um, pokes you, Kor, and says, Kor, I, I have a question for you. Mm. Do you think you could kill a genie? I could kill anything. Rooster is a genie, and I imagine I could kill him if I absolutely had to. So, yes. Hmm. Why? It's something that might come up in our future. And it's just good to know of... Um, Good to know of your capabilities. Are genies a frequent problem out here? Not that I know of, no. And then why would you anticipate an attack from one? Well, I, um, you know, doesn't mean they all have to be good, right? This place has a complicated relationship with genies. I saw that there were guards that were attacked, that were, um, were looking for them specifically. Oh. For guarding against them? The wish guard. Yes. Mm. So then genies are a large problem here. Well... They do cause a lot of trouble to some people. And I believe the Wish Guard has taken it upon themselves to um, control it, them. That's what they call it, at least. Control. I, I see. And you yourself have issues with genies? Only with one. It's not that one, is it? He <laughs> gestures over his shoulder to Rooster. No, no. No, Rooster is a delight. Well, if a genie causes me any problems, I'm sure I could kill him. Good to know. Thank you, friend. Gives him the, the side eye. <laughs> I wouldn't be killing him for you, so we're clear. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Rooster, are you just staying up there? Yeah, and catching all the bugs. Catching all the bugs. <laughs> he also has got his goggles on because mm-hmm. it's probably getting a lot of like, like he doesn't like his bugs in the eye. Nobody likes bugs in the eyes. No. Of course, making snow cones. <laughs> My God. Oh, that's really awesome. <laughs> Rooster, suddenly there's just like squealing in the cabin below of delight. I think like maybe what happened was that Roost Core maybe saw like one little granny who is like particularly having a hard time with it and then mm-hmm. he just like summons like I don't know if we can if we can say it's like maybe a cantrip or something to just like kind of make like a, oh, yeah. a palm full of snow. Sure. And it's just sort of just like here. Like gives her like I don't know she's got a cup or something he just puts it in there as if it's like a, a clump of rice but it's snow. Yeah. Core, you you do that and this lady is ever so thankful for it. And then you you like look behind you and you notice there's just like ten people like peering over your shoulder that would love a piece of whatever you just did. Okay, snow cones for everybody. <laughs> you're, you're gonna be busy Doesn't with that. Doesn't even have any flavoring. It's just like just <laughs> pure snow. Doesn't matter. They're in a hot metal can in the desert. They'll take it. Okay. And, yeah, Rooster, you just hear, like, snow cones! Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to, like, t- 
turn, but like spider climb, like <laughs> <laughs> like a then, crab rotating in the yeah, sand. Yeah, the crab rotating in the sand, just going like dunk, 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 like on top of the train. Mm-hmm. You can probably hear it because he's got metal shoes. Yeah, uh, and then you just uh, see him upside down at a window, and then you see Cora handing out snow cones yeah. to everybody. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. I made them some snow to hold, and now they're eating it. <laughs> it's like, it's like sand. Why are you making sand? It's snow. It's small ice. Oh, okay. Put it in my mouth. Ah. <laughs> he just like opens up the window. <laughs> yeah. And that's not what an opening window sounds like. <laughs> it's a very sticky window. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's just a, like full handful full of snow, and just like <laughs> here, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, shoves it in your mouth. I have- Another one? Ah, uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> the second one. Sure. There you go. <laughs> it's really choking on yeah, it now. Yeah, we'll give me four, I would say. Okay. Uh, 13. Okay, you're not choking. Another four, I would save. 21. And no brain freeze either. Nice. No. Okay, he's he's essentially he's like... no brain to freeze. He's, he's kind of like tilting his head to make sure none of it falls. And he's going to crap crawl back to the front and then go... And then just give half of it to the train conductor. By the time you get there, it's just a handful of spit. Like it's melted. All the way? Yeah. That's really fast. It's, it's hot. hot. You're in a desert. Yes. It's gone. Oh, well, I mean, he still gestures it. Bah <laughs> Get back inside. I don't even spit. That's fucking gross. <laughs> nah. <laughs> you touch him? <laughs> puts his hand in front of him. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean... Uh, You're an absolute terror. <laughs> an absolute disaster. Nah, this, is, this is my element. Okay. With a natural 20 to attack you with his elbow, oh. he lands. Uh-oh. My face. Um, Because he's, he's, he's got his face and his hand in front. Yeah, I mean, I picture that you coming around the side, and he's kind of just like elbowing. I was on the top, like above him. Yeah, Yeah. he's climbing on the roof of the thing again. Yeah, I'm on the roof. Mm, Okay, well, he still elbows you up then. Yeah. (laughs) Either way, uh, Rooster, you're catching an elbow, and you're going to take seven points of bludgeoning damage. (laughs) He just laughs, and you get knocked back. (laughs) Okay, all right. Get back inside. Get back your seat. It was good. You lost your roof privileges. No. All right, fine. And then he like pulls back a bit. He just stays there. (laughs) Get it out on the roof. Make some sounds. I'm literally looking at you. A little farther back. Get, get inside. <laughs> no. Roofs for good boys. Oh. It's <laughs> just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? It totally works. <laughs> um. The, yeah, it's like you just see the pop up that, you know, deep disliked that. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, is <laughs> disappointed in eh. you. All right, fine. He like, he like crab shuffles, but he's going to move to the next cart, the back. The cargo, cargo cart? Yeah. Okay. And then is there like a, there must be like a back door. For the cargo cart? Yeah. It just has side loading doors. Oh, it doesn't have like the typical um, train backing? Oh, oh, sorry. I see I see what you're getting at. Uh, yes. Yes, it does have that. I see what you mean. He'll go there. He'll be off the roof, but he'll be standing with the bars. Okay. Sure. Because he likes to... Be outside. He doesn't like to be in small, confined spaces, to be honest. So, well, actually, I'll say it's pretty spacious. But sure, you enjoy the ride from the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, hours pass. Um, you know, Nelthor is chatting it up with Ucor, and eventually, you see um, another like person deep comes down actually into the cabin, and <laughs> who's driving the car? Nobody right now, and has a tray full of cooked meats in front of him. Turns out he set up a barbecue up there and made some dinner for everybody. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, Rooster, when you like look up, you can see like a smoke trail now leading. Oh. Away, almost like you were in a steam locomotive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's barbecue. It smells it's like good. It's the most redneck thing I've ever heard. Barbecue on top of a moving Beulah train? Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. think he's it's cooking it with the sun? Like it's Ooh, so hot. Like mirrors and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just, he's cooking on the roof of the, <laughs> well, no, you'd take damage then. If the roof of yeah, the, just the roof. No, the yeah, roof no, no. It was like tin. But he's got he's got just like a good old barbecue set up up there, and he's just made a bunch of meat for everybody for dinner. You join everybody for dinner? Yeah, but he mm-hmm. goes through the windows. <laughs> <laughs> There's a perfectly fine ladder. Nah, nah he, he likes a challenge. Do you? Uh, Nelson says, do you, do you enjoy the window more than the uh, ladder right right over there? But that's in the, that's made for that purpose. Windows are more interesting. I can't argue with that. Uh, and you guys enjoy your dinner. Actually, sorry, I forgot. This is very important. I have to roll for that. 
How good is dinner? How good is dinner? Assorted redneck meats and corn on the cob. 66, it ain't half bad. Yeah. It's mostly about the novelty of it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the sun is certainly starting to set now with dinner being served as well. Eventually, you notice everything, like, shift in the cart. And you look outside and you actually notice that the sand has started changing color. It looks to be more of a bluish color now. Ooh. And it's extremely, like, reflective. When I say reflective, not like a mirror, more like millions of tiny mirrors. Mm, very glittery. Sparkly. And you also notice it's moving mm. like a sand ocean. And, of course, the train floats right on top of it. And you guys are now moving through the next area, the rip mm. sands. I want to get a cup. Okay, you get a cup. I want to hang out the window. You hang out the window. See if I can grab some sand. You grab some sand. Are you just examining it? Are you eating I'm it? I'm bringing it in. It is a light bluish color, and it seems to be just like millions of tiny fragments of blue glass. I eat it. Oh my god. It's sand. It tastes like every other sand? It tastes like sand. Yeah. <laughs> Rooster sand says, it tastes like every other sand. Sand has different tastes. I mean, I was trying and it was... Um, you, you know, I'll roll on a D100 if it's saltier. It is. Yeah. It's mm. saltier sand. So parts parts of the make parts of the glitter is literal salt? Apparently now it is. Cool. cool. Well, I mean, he... Yeah, he takes it and he goes like... Ha, la, la, la. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you I, try. No, thank you. That I think I, I think that's sand. Yeah, it tastes like the uh, well. It's saltier than the other sand back home. I was seeing if they were different, and this is clearly different. I, I'm seeing a lot of crazy things lately. You try like a sprinkle of it. Uh, it is salty. It's pretty good. Hi. <laughs> eats the rest God of it. God damn it. <sighs> Hey, breath, give me strength. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. You're basically in the ocean now. Uh, some of you might get seasick. But... Ooh, no four. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, right, no Can we four. roll for that? Fortitude saves! Thank you. It's only a DC 10. Oh, I beat it. Nelthor does as well with a 15. Ooh, okay. I got an 11, so I'm close. It looks like overall people are doing okay. There's maybe a couple people a little queasy, like, uh, but nobody's vomited, nobody's hurled. And in fact, as the sun sets... And it's just like lighting up the rip sands with like all these like sunset reflections. Uh, eventually people settle in for the night. Does the sand glow at all at night or is it just turns off? Well, not as much a glow as it's just like a colorful blue reflection. It can almost of. be like starlight. It's yeah. really like as if you were on, on the beach on mm -hmm. an ocean and you see the sunset. In nighttime. Yeah. Cool. And the waves are like the moment they're they are rough ish it's it's okay like it's it's not bad in here actually because the train's rather massive boy i bet everybody's really grateful for core now yeah. like trying to sleep when you're too hot is awful yeah it's quite nice i think people may have even started like closing the windows just to keep the ac in <laughs> 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 and um night falls is there anything rooster that you want to do during the night while everybody else is falling asleep or are you going to sleep along with them? I feel like with you, I always have to ask. Yeah, yeah, no, you do. I think he'll try to sleep on top of the train again. Sure. He likes outside a lot. He'd rather look at the stars. I will say at this point, getting, like, the top of the train is a bit sketchier mm. because it's not a flat surface. It's slightly rounded, oh, and you're okay. going over waves. Uh, okay. There's a good chance you might roll <laughs> off in your sleep. I think Cor, Cor will try to get you off. Mm -hmm. okay, rooster, everyone is going to sleep. It's time to get off the roof now. Okay. All right, well, uh, I'll just um, be in the back of the train. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, you so you sleep in the like the back the little train nook thing? The in little the nook. back. Sure. To be honest, it's really just he doesn't want to be inside like that. For yeah. sure, it's it's pretty tight for him. Yeah, for sure. Cor will do a very very minimal like like itty bitty prayer because he doesn't really have the luxury of like using like setting up candles and shit like that. It's mm -hmm. just kind of like it's like you know, Abrith protect me does does a very quick version of it so that it can be over and done with. And then you, you notice as you open your eyes. There's like a dozen people around you right now that have joined you in prayer saying, thank you, Abrith, for sending us this very cool, chill demon guy making <laughs> snow cones. <laughs> That's very cash money of you. Cor gets a little bit of, gets a happy fuzzy from that. 
But people are just like, Ma, that, Avery sent this dude here? That's all right with us. <laughs> <laughs> you all sleep. Nothing crazy happens during the night. In fact, the sea's even maybe calm for a while, making the sleep a little bit easier on you. And eventually, mm-hmm. morning comes. It, and the sunrise is just as beautiful as the sunset. And Rooster, once again, you're awoken by a column of tasty smoke above mm. deep making breakfast. Yeah, also, Rooster's while he's passing by, he's going to check on Jessica just to make sure she's okay in the cup. The, yeah, you the see, she, she's chilling in the cargo bay. Cargo bay. <laughs> You're just like, Jessica, are you lonely? I know I miss you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and breakfast happens. Do you head back to the front to eat with everybody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And you all have breakfast. Um, and then you see a... Well, give me spot checks, actually. See what you see. Cor will also serve up some breakfast uh, snow cones. Too. Oh, yeah. 17. 10. <laughs> Cor. Yeah. You see a bright blue glow, glowing dot. I don't know, you can't quite make out exactly what it is, mm-hmm. but it's, it's a small size. I mean, he'll move his way to the front of the cart over to where Deeb is and mm-hmm. ask, what, what is that? Is that the city? No, I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't, the city's still a few hours out. It should be the city. Do you not have a spyglass on you? Do I? Oh, I do. <laughs> always uh, prepared. Always so prepared. Dude, he can make food and drive trains. Don't judge him too hard. Hands you the spyglass. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you can spot that it is uh, a person coming towards you. Like running on top of the sand? Yes. On top of the moving, wavy sand. Oh, okay. Okay. And they are getting rapidly closer to you. Do they look mad? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then you see there's going to be a collision is what I'm oh, saying okay. here. And then they kind of turn to mist. But you can see the bluish mist still. It's like okay. a small mist cloud. Yeah, like they do a misty step with the vapor kind left of. behind. Okay. Yeah. There was somebody there. They didn't look happy. Now they're they're gone now. And the train collides with the mist. <laughs> the mist enters the train and then reforms into a person. Everybody sees this. I'm not going to make you roll for it. Rooster, you just see a blue person, like like light blue person, manifest yeah. in front of you and just like reach out to you and grab you. Me? Yes. Me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna check. Not 20, okay, oh yeah, they, they fucking grab you by the neck. The neck neck. The neck like, neck. Like an aggressive. Yes. Oh, okay. So they grab you, but the problem is they are not moving with the train. Oh no. Oh no. So Rooster, you're being held and pushed through everybody sitting behind you and the train wall. Uh, really fast. Extremely fast. So I'm just getting like clock, clock, clocked. Yeah. Oh god. So, uh, I want to get out of that. <laughs> yeah, I bet yeah. you do. Uh, but it's, it happens really quickly. I'm describing it in slow motion. But basically, this they come in, grab you, time. boom, 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 and you explode through the passenger cart, killing yes. a few people in the process. Oh, no. like it's God. I mean, you. he's 300 pounds. And then explode through the cargo cart as you have stood still while the train has literally driven through you. Is this like a fucking in- invincible moment? Yeah, that a bit. It looks dead. Like, oh, God. <laughs> it is. Oh, my God. It is a bit of an invincible moment. <laughs> Holy shit. And there is uh, quite a bit of blood inside the cabinet. And on moment. Rooster. Oh. And on Rooster, who, of course, takes a little bit of damage, but because of oh, the really? gold bones, like, you don't take as much as you'd think, but you still take 13 um, points. Don't you also just plow through the cargo cart, too? Like, it, yeah, they plow oh, through. How the- much? Hmm? How much? How much? 13. <laughs> Are you dead? I have one hit point <laughs> left. <laughs> oh, I have shit. one hit point one left. One hit point, okay. So, in, and yes, they plowed through the cargo cart as well, and there's just like an explosion of silver and gold pieces just like out the back as the train careens forward. We'll get back to that yeah, in a yeah. moment. <laughs> Core, you've just seen this happen extremely fast. Yeah, holy fuck. Like a fuck. fucking car crash. Uh, seven people died as they Aww. were crushed by this problem oh, no. that were sitting behind you. Was Aww. it the old lady? <gasps> Was it the old lady? Hi, Lo. Hi, she survives. Hi, she survives. Yeah. That's a low. No. The old lady. Revenge! The old lady exploded. <laughs> oh. Oh. Why would you do this? <laughs> she didn't like her snow cone. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Fuck you. What? <laughs> I wasn't even going to bring her up. You guys brought her up. Uh, yeah, that's my fault. Um. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is not my fault. <laughs> it's not Brunette. It's not your fault, Felix. <laughs> this is not my fault. Cor, what do you like to do? I mean, he has to make some very quick decisions about how we're going to continue forward. I think he just turns deep and he just says, keep going. And then he's going to book it to the end of the cart 
There's nothing he can really do about the people who are dead, unfortunately. Uh, mm-hmm. The only thing he knows right now is that this, whatever that fucking guy is, uh, he can't be allowed to, I don't know, be following them. He wants to, I want I want him to jump from the cart where they currently are onto the cargo cart and just basically grab Jessica. Okay, sure. Like, if I'm, like, Cora is leaving the train behind, but he's taking Jessica with them. High, low, Jessica's broken. 15. Oh! Jessica no. snapped in half. Oh! I'm glad Rooster's not there right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, let's get to Rooster for a second while Cora's dealing with that. <laughs> Rooster, you're, you're being choked. And in front of you is someone who looks a little close to someone like you. They have light blue skin, somewhat matching the color of the sand here. White hair, kind of like the color of seafoam. And they have two golden bracers. So Though they are about twice your height. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> She looks at you with an icy stare and says, How dare you enter my domain unannounced? <laughs> like, how is he supposed to talk? She chokes you harder, saying, What was that? Like, putting his hands up and desperately trying to, like, because he's getting choked. Yeah, at this, at this point, she drops you. <laughs> you fall down to the ground. Are you able to, like, stand on this sand, or is it, like, is it, like, liquid? You pass into it. It is actually quite liquid, but I think because she permits it, is your best guess, you can stand on it right now. I mean, he needs to take a moment. He's covered in blood. He got pushed out of the train. He's hurting. He goes, excuse you. What the? Excuse me. Excuse you. What is wrong with you? What is this? An attack on my domain? Trying to get new territory? Trying to encroach? I don't know what you're talking about uh why don't we just start from the top um hi uh i'm brewster <laughs> like cut coughs out blood <laughs> and uh you are what's your name i didn't catch it or did you say it to be honest i'm kind of like a lot's going on i'm in my head. nira of the rip sands you're in my domain nice to meet you nira i don't really know what that is what do you mean what that is I am me. <laughs> what? Well, okay. Okay. I know what Nira is and that you are you, but I don't know what the word domain is. You're using words I don't know. What do you mean you don't know what domain is? Domain, my territory. The sand? Yes. It's good sand. I understand yes. why you like it. And you're entering it without permission. Well, and I, I want to know why. I mean, I was in a train. I wasn't, I didn't go into the sand. I actually stayed out, out of And what is a genie like you doing on a train? Oh, okay. So you're a genie too. Yeah. Oh. Well, okay. This makes less sense. Um. No, I don't know really why you're upset about me traveling. Uh, should I have sent you a letter? I don't write. I actually can't read. But I didn't know you before. But now we know each other. So then we could, you know, start again and maybe be friends. Uh, you're gonna have to apologize to whoever's ear is on my shoulder. <laughs> and also this tooth. And he pulls it out of his, his arm. Why are you... Mm. And now she's losing her cool a bit. She was all tough and composed, and now she's getting, like, almost, like, not, like, flustered, but, you know, she's just, like... Mm. <laughs> okay, but why Why are you here? Why are you going through my domain unannounced? Why are you on I'm the I'm going train? to Kikama. Why? Uh, because I'm helping uh, Kor who is a big demon guy, uh, he wanted to go to that place, and I thought, cool, I'll go there. I heard there's, like, a really big arena there that you can go fight stuff, and then I could just go and... Why, 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 why are you traveling? Why are you traveling? Why are you moving? Why wouldn't I? Why are you not staying in your domain where you should be staying? See, you keep using that word. T- territory, whatever. But I don't actually... Your home. Oh, well, I don't know. I got tired of it. I mean, I, I was looking for some adventure. And that's why I left. I, To be honest, I've never met another genie before. Oh my god, so you're just an idiot. Well, yeah, you're like my first <laughs> I've ever met. I actually really don't know anything about being a genie, so um, maybe you can inform me. Kor, what are yeah. you doing at this time? Kor is approaching as oh. best as he can. And I'm also bringing the pieces of Jessica with me. Oh, bringing the trauma along. Okay. Well, I mean... Well, if it's mo- well, also, if this place is moving, you can still ride her. It's just, you know... She's broken, though. But the sail is broken, right? Well, she's broken in half. Like, completely? The board is snapped in oh, half. Oh, fuck. Yeah. 
Oh, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> and Rooster, you see that. I mean, you see the train is leaving. <laughs> uh, but you do see Core approaching. Uh, okay, so points to Core's direction. That's my buddy. You point at Core. She looks at Core. Core, you are immediately swallowed by sand and pulled down. Fuck! And then you pop up right beside them. Oh, <laughs> nice. <Ugh. laughs> Cough off some sand. What's going on, Rooster? What's happening? Yeah, it's, uh, so this is... Nira! Nira! I gotta write that down in my brain. Okay, this is uh, Nira. <laughs> you you see Rooster's fucked yeah, up. Yeah, you're fucked up. <laughs> he's really fucked yeah. up right now. Yeah, and you've got the blood of a lot of other fucked up people over yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. he's probably got a black eye just from all yeah. of that. Okay, so this is Nira. Uh, she's a genie, like me. Uh, and she doesn't seem too happy that I'm walking on her sand. I think Cor sees you all like banged up and he like immediately picks you up almost like somebody would pick up a dog that's gotten into a fight with another dog <laughs> and just hold it Cor- Rooster under his arm. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, when somebody's just like, oh, no, that pit bull is after my tiny little York- York- Yorkie terrier. Mm-hmm. He's got, he's, so he's got you under his arm. Okay. And Rooster, you see Jessica broken in half. Oh my god. Uh god, this guy go through a lot today. He just woke up. I did say we were gonna get to it. Yeah, I mean Core is like, what what reason do you have for attacking us? Well, I thought he was attacking me. We the genie do doesn't just en- enter another domain uninvited or unannounced. That is considered an attack. Uh, did you know this? No. What happened? I think wiggles. He wiggles Stop. and gets out. Stop get wiggling. Out? You can see Jessica after we're done resolving this issue. No! Oh, Jessica! <laughs> we did not knowingly make an attack on you. And as you can see, my f- companion here did not know. He does not know almost anything about this, apparently. Apparently. I, this was a misunderstanding. We didn't even attack you! you yeah, are, I struck first. Yes, you struck first. She looks, she looks very conflicted. <laughs> and what say you for all this blood? Those people you killed back there. That he better apologize. Obviously, he did not knowingly do that. Look at him. <laughs> Just gestures to Qu- Rooster, who's like crying. <laughs> Look at him. Ugh. What? Uh, t- okay. Get, 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 fucking Fuck. wiggles out. Let's him go. Fuck. <laughs> all right. First of all, that wasn't cool. That was actually really messed up. And you killed a bunch of people for no reason. You literally just could have talked to me. Second. I don't know any of your stuff or bullshit you're talking Why about. Why not? I don't you're know. You're a genie, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Although you're kind of weird. You're weird too. Chick picks you up by the neck. <clears throat> looks you all over. She like turns you upside down. Ah! What are you exactly? What? What do you mean? I'm kinda rooster. Kind of like baby genie? What? No. Can you even cast wishes? Yeah. Yes, but not right now. Where's your lamp? You, you, he doesn't have it with him. I, I lost it. But he says when he has you his lamp. You lost it? Yeah. Her expression changes to a mixture of like horror and like seriousness and then followed by compassion. She's really struggling with her emotions right now okay. when you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> How did you lose it? How did you lose that lamp? I I got really drunk and I lost it in a card game. Compassion, and I don't remember who Compassion gone. Compassion has gone. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't remember who. Um it was a very crazy night. I don't even remember. it's been a bit. No, I don't know much. When I came to Teak and Boris, I don't know. Teak? Yeah. That's your domain, though? I guess. It's the place where I lived. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, is that when I popped into existence or whatever, I just was in the desert. And then I just started to walk. And then I walked and walked and walked and walked. And then I fell in a hole and then I got out of the hole. And then I walked and walked and walked some more until eventually I got to Teak. You are weird. You're way weirder. You know. I am a proper genie, and whatever you are is not. That makes you the weird one. I am a genie. I'm just... You are not. It's starting to seem like, yes, you are the abnormality here. You're not even floating. What? Who would choose to walk, seriously? And you notice she's levitating. That's... <laughs> no, <laughs> I I am a genie, and I just don't... You don't know anything. You were supposed to be my guide, and you don't know anything. I know how to travel. Do you? Yes. Because our travel, and he points out to the distance of the small speck of the train, is that way with several dead people on it. And this apparently could have been avoided if you had known that you cannot travel into another genie's territory. 
Okay, well, when you put it like that... I brought with you, or brought you with me to do one thing, which was to get me to Kikoma. Yeah. And I assumed if I brought you with me that I would have a, a accurate guide. Yes, but you knew I'd never been there before. I assumed you knew something about the rules of this world and how diplomacy, basic good common enough. sense. Yeah, I know good enough. <laughs> I think Cor looks looks at Nera, just like almost like a level of like can't believe this guy right now sort of energy. Her as well. You guys meet like you gaze as me, just mm. like this fucking guy. I feel like I'm getting teened up here. <laughs> he turns to Nera. It was me that requested that we travel this way because I want to get to Kikoma. The only reason that he is here is because he was supposed to be my guide. He did not knowingly violate your territory agreements. Technically, it was my fault. Nira sighs. And when she sighs, you can tell, like, her posture, like, chills out. Oh, yeah. I think that's been, um... This is awkward. This is terrible. You have made this very awkward. I did nothing! I was eating breakfast! You killed a bunch of people and then you broke Jessica! Gestures to the boat. Which one's worse? The people. Looks at Rooster. Let me think. (laughs) I have to think. I have to think. think. I have to think about what his value of life is. Kor is not like a patron of like of let's let's protect innocent people. He's not really adverse to like to just casual bloodshed happening. But from his perspective, there was just like 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 at the very least there were fucking kids there that are probably been obliterated. Oh yeah. Okay. Right? You said there were kids on that train. I did not say there were kids. No? It's a working train. There was no kids Pardon there. Pardon me. There granny. was an old lady. I'm upset about granny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a granny. I think it's plain to see he's of no threat to you. That is clean to see. However, maybe you can be of help. You want me to help you after you broke Jessica and killed a bunch of people and covered me in a lot of blood and this guy's ear and whatever that is. Yeah, I think so. I think I need to ask you for help. Why is that? Are you asking me or are you telling me? Asking. This time I'll ask. Perhaps we can help each other. If you fix Jessica. I will fix Jessica if you'll hear out my plight. Wait, Rooster like stops. Like he's listening. And then he just goes like Nelly. What about him? He's gone. Who cares? Yeah, he's fine. Quite a distance over there now. Uh, I was Nell for one of the people who got who got blasted? No, what Nell for? Because he sat across from you guys, he was fine. Yeah. Are you able to revive those people you killed? You're a genie, right? You can mish wishes. Mm, yeah, but life and death is not something we do. No, they're goners. But we can at least fix your sand sailor. Jessica. Jess, Je- Jessica. We can fix. I can fix you, Jessica. Will you permit us to leave your territory afterwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. And now that I know who he is, clearly no threat, you can come and go whenever you want. But I'd like to ask you for help. I don't like you. And I don't usually help people I don't like. But you know what? We'll start new. All right, new. And she, she checks it out. Hi, so I'm Nira. I'm a little touchy feely with strangers. Not so good with that. You but... touched me just fine. <laughs> Don't put it that way. And maybe you could help me uh, on this uh, quest, new adventurer person. Of course. Of course, kind of standing here mad. Yeah. He's just upset. (laughs) Yeah, so is Rooster. No, he's mad at you. (laughs) Well, Rooster's just upset. Listen, I'm not good with people. I need help from one lampless genie to another. Oh, you also lost your lamp? Yes. Huh? Was it also in a card game? No. Oh. It was stolen from me. If we agree to help you, I want to make... I have other stipulations. Okay, I mean, I should know better making contracts with demons. Go for it. You will repair Jessica. Yes. I want to know about any other grandiose threats between here and Kikoma. I was going to tell you those in a minute, but yeah. And are you able to produce... I'll grant you a wish. Are you able You're able to do that? Yeah. Mm, no, don't do that. Why? I don't trust her. We'll leave the wish on the table as a maybe for later. All right. So then what is it? Okay. So as we speak, your friends on the train are currently being raided by Captain Carmichael and the Scorn Pirates. What? God yeah. damn it. Ah. Don't worry. They won't kill them. And those are the same people that currently have my lamp and my pet. And I would like those back. I can't go after them. Because? They have my lamp. Therefore, and- complete control over me should I approach them. So I can't get it. But you, you could do it. Do you have any kind of magical abilities currently, aside from attacking? I control most of this ocean you're on. Sand ocean, but an ocean nonetheless. 
Fine. Are you able to repair the boat now so we can get there? Yeah. I can. Do it now. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Um, and she does. She um, she gets like the she kind of assembles the boat a little bit, like sticks the pieces together, and then fixes it, casting a spell. Mend. And boom. Jessica's back in one piece. Not a scratch on her. Well, only the scratches you know about. Here you go. Good. She's fixed up. Rooster, let's go. Fine. Gets on the boat. I'm sorry. You just talk to me. Like, you just got to just show up and talk to me. Any other genie. Sorry, any normal genie. Excuse me. I might be dead by now. Pardon my reaction, but that's kind of necessary around these parts. Mm. I didn't realize you were you. Well, sorry for being me, I guess. Well, no, I'm actually quite grateful that you are you. Well. Otherwise, it would have been a lot bloodier. There's already enough blood here. That is enough blood for one day. So listen, I can point you the way to where they have their hideout, but you better be careful with them because they are, I mean, they're pirates. They're crazy. I mean, don't we have to go and save our friends? Oh, they've already been captured by the pirates by now, I'm pretty sure. Because if you look, and she points to the horizon and I was like, there's like two rocks that kind of look like, almost like two bones kind of intersecting each other. That's usually where they ambush the shipments and I'm pretty sure they've reached that by now. So yeah, your friends are got probably captured, going to be sold to slaves and all that stuff. That's not good. No, it's not. Not ideal. But you could help. All of us. Fine. Fine. Okay. Let's go. Just bring me my lamp. And your pet. What's your pet? How do we know? Well, it's a giant sand hydra called Sandra, so I'm sure you'll find it. Okay. I guess we're looking for Sandra. Well, I mean, try to avoid her. Just get the lamp. She obeys whoever holds the lamp. Yeah? Yeah? That tracks. Yeah, exactly. So just be careful with her. She's... She's a gentle soul. Are you able to fix this? He gestures broadly to Rooster and him having only one hit point left. Says the cleric. Can you, can't you heal him? You did that to him. Look, but I fine, c- if I have to do it myself. I can repair objects, not people. All right, fine. You come here. <laughs> 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 Slap. Briefly takes him to zero hit points and then heals him for the <laughs> <Yeah>. rest. <laughs> I hit him that hard. <laughs> uh, cure light wounds. Seven points. Thank you. All right. You can find me when you're done. Just go out to the desert. I'll find you. We go. Okay, you guys get swallowed by the sand. <laughs> uh, then, get on the boat. And Come. then spat out closer to the target position. All right. <laughs> oh, like with the boat? Yeah. yeah she exactly. just coughed us up. In okay. fact, you're coughed up uh, ne- near um, kind of like a rock jutting out of the, the, quote, ocean. And yes, you can see in the distance how there is a literal pirate ship that is towing the train behind it. And uh, they're towing it away towards a large cave in the mm. distance. Do I still have the guy, the conductor's spyglass? You do. Oh. Uh, I will inspect cave. Inspect cave. So in the distance, you can see, uh, like, it's like a cave just kind of carved into the side of a mountain by nature, God knows what. Inside, they have, like, a, quote, harbor <laughs> where they park their ship. Mm-hmm. And inside, there is a big old, big old pirate hideout. You can see maybe, like, 20 houses in there. There's quite a lot of pirates in there. Well, we're there to go get our friends, get the lamp, and Sandra. Okay, we have to infiltrate a pirate base and sneak in and or defeat all the pirates. And the Rooster just said, what are we doing? Right, which I guess means Gore's coming up with the game plan. Yeah. Rooster's definitely like, his brain, I think, is going way too fast right now. He's a bit overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of information all at once, and there's a lot of people that are mad at him, and he doesn't understand what's going on. <laughs> oh, I will also add something. Mm-hmm. You guys, because Nira wills it, you're able to walk on the sand. Oh, oh sweet. That's nice. Yes. So you're basically walking on water. Okay, I have an idea. Uh, af- after Rooster says, um, you're asking Kor what to do. Yeah, he's just like, what are we doing again? Uh, Kor just says, steer us over, steer us there. Uh, okay, sure. And he does. Okay. okay. You basically follow the pirates home. Okay. Um, and of course, pull us into port. Okay. You sure? Yep. All right. He does. Okay. okay. Uh, you immediately get a lot of attention. <laughs> right. Uh, once we pull into port... Uh, Cora's going to stand up and then grab Rooster by the back of the neck and say, I want to speak to your leader. I have a tribute. What? You're using words I don't know. Where is your captain? You hear like big footsteps on the coming from the deck of the pirate ship because they're still busy unloading. So you guys are basically just in the harbor of this pirate cove right now and you hear like, boom, boom. But then a pretty normal looking guy approaches <laughs> with a big old ha- pirate hand and says, 
And who might you be to request the presence of the great Captain Carmichael? My name is Kor. I'm a traveler from the Demon Realm. That's a stupid name. Well, Carmichael's... Actually, Look Carmichael. at him. I totally flabbergasted him. And everybody else starts laughing. Hmm. My name is Rooster. I could make a joke right now, but I'm not going to. I heard that you were the greatest pirate in the sandy place. That is correct. The one and only. So I wanted to ask if I could work for you. You want to work for the Scorn Pirates? Well, what, what do you, what, what do you uh, bring to the table do that you I might serve under me? Guy? I bring this guy. And I think Kor Co just like hooks you around so that he holds you up by the ankle. Heh. <laughs> And he's like, look. And then he even like, shows off your your uh, gold teeth. your gold teeth. See? Blech. A good prize. What, some random kid? What do I need that one for? He has teeth made of gold. And he weighs as heavy as five satchels of the stuff. You see the captain pull out some glasses and like, look. How old is this fucker? <laughs> he's not that old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't see well. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I would describe this guy... I have to describe him properly. Um, he appears to be of, of like he appears to be an elf. However, kind of short for an elf, is wearing like the flashiest pirate outfit, um, and is maybe like I mean elves have a different time scale for age, but you could describe him as like late twenties. Car, are are you gonna sell me? This course says nothing. Oh, okay. I think he is gonna sell you, lad. And well, in return, you just want to work for me? Correct. Hmm. Demon, too. Interesting. I can also do this. Pulls, holds out his hand. Snow cone. You might be more useful than you look. All right, we'll discuss it. As for your friend, uh, throw him with the other um, merchandise over there. And he points to a bunch of cages where the train people are currently being kept. Okay. I'm going to drag Rooster over there. Can Actually, I throw him over my shoulder. Yeah, I think uh, Rooster's pretty quiet, but then he says, like, you know what? Believe it or not, this has happened to me a couple times. So, I get it. But, you know, Core, it was nice to hang out, though. I'm not selling you. But you just said you were. Yeah, I know. It's called a lie. Oh. You're going to be with all their cargo. You might be able to find Sandra and maybe some of their other valuables, including the lamp. That's smart. Thank you. It's an old demon tactician thing. We call it the Trojan boar. Ha, I'm a boar. Hmm? I'm a boar. Sure, but you have to act sad. I mean, I kind of am. Okay, keep doing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> act oh. sad and like I betrayed you. Oh. Uh, I'm really sad right now. How could how could you do this to me, Cor? Uh, I can't talk to you right now. Captain Carmichael approaches as you're like shoving uh, rooster off to be with the other prisoners mm. and Carmichael definitely leans to you and is like are you going to cry? You look you're going to cry. Are you going to cry? No. Are you, are you sure you look a little baby right now? A little pink weird thing, baby fucking thing. Well, no, I'm first of you're all You're really short too. What are you like a kid? Well, first, no, I'm not a not a kid. He is a, he is a child. No, I'm not cuz that means he points to Carmichael and says, "He's a kid too then." Huh? <laughs> Hang on. Of course, trying not to like. Of course, not try not to let that register on his face. <laughs> he definitely raised the eyebrows like, oh, he's got it. Wait, no, I'm not supposed to be on this guy's side. Yeah. I am surprised that third edition does not have vicious mockery because that's what he's actively using on you right now. Aww. So instead, he's just being a dick. <laughs> being an asshole. You don't take any damage. He casts the spell being a dick. Uh. Yeah, he casts, he casts asshole. Yeah, no, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, no, and Bruce said, well, okay, first of all, not a kid. Second of all, pink skin, genie. So a sunburned, cry little baby. And no, I'm not going to cry. I'm just going to be bad. So mad. No. Oh, 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 shiver me timbers. I'm so scared of you right now. Better keep you in that cage. I did my job. And he goes into the cage. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like core. All right. So you want to work for me? Yes. <clears throat> cool. Go scrub the deck. Mm, all right. Because I'm off to go count my new treasure. Getting richer every time. You're a dick, and your hat is stupid. Oh, you you hear from everybody on like. Ooh. <laughs> 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 I 
And Cora's much more valuable than scrubbing the deck. He could do a bunch of stuff. You look how big he is. He's right. Captain Carmichael turns around and comes back to you, Rooster. Works like at you and then leaves to go to his ship. Well, you hurt his feelings. Like, yeah, he's a coward. And uh, then you notice one of the ship's cannons turning towards you. Uh, mm. uh. What would you like to do before Rooster is inevitably shot with a cannonball? Okay. <laughs> I'm in a cage. I know. Uh, that is your problem, not mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, Kor is going to... Captain, I think you should reconsider. He is extremely valuable merchandise and will be less valuable if he had a cannon shot through him. I heard that before. He is also just jealous because he has never had a hat at all. Ever. Obviously, he's blinded by the glory of your hat. I will describe that um, you're kind of in a collective cage. No, yeah, not in a single bunch cage. Of there's a bunch of people in there. And I'll say... At this point, is Rooster... Deep in there? Hmm? Is Deeb in there? Deeb is in there. And <laughs> Rooster, oppose grapple. 21. Ooh, you do. Because people are trying to grab you to get you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many hugs. And also, it's like one of them is like failing to like properly grab you, but they're like, oh, I'm such a scary baby. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I've never meant to say that. Please put the cannon away. Oh, my God. <laughs> And they're like trying to act as if you're saying yeah, that, what are but they're you doing? failing miserably. What is it? What do we? What do you want? So I'm I'm not in the mood for hugs. Can you please shut up? You're gonna get us all killed. Cora leans in closer to the cage and he says, "Think about Jessica being shattered across the sand, lonely, broken, upset. You betrayed her. You're gone. She's upset. She's so sad." Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Don't shoot the cannon. I mean, I'm trying to get him to cry, but okay, that works too. He lights the fuse, which is now starting to trickle down. It's like, so, what, what, what was that? So, what? I didn't hear that. The fuse is going. Ah, uh, that I'm really sorry. And your hat is not stupid. And uh, I kind of look, look at all the people behind I, me. I don't know, like, uh, I'm in my ear. And I'm a big cry baby. Puts the wick out. Walks past you, smug, and keeps walking. I don't really like this guy. I have a question. We have we, we, we touched on something and we have sure. to follow this up on this. Yeah, yeah, sure. How short is this guy? He's about four foot ten. Oh, damn it. What? It's the same. What? He's what? four foot ten? Yeah. So he's on the shorter side for an elf. Damn it. Rooster's four foot nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I mean, with his hat, he's like a foot taller, but. Right. So. <laughs> damn Amazing. it. Amazing. <laughs> this doesn't mean that Cor thinks it's a kid. <laughs> Kids can eat their ass kicked too sometimes. Yeah. Uh, we will teach this special and child a lesson. I think Cord just like looks at you and he's just like just trying to find what we're looking for. Okay. I could do that. So to describe the scene, you have the ship and it's being unloaded. Um, there's kind of like a dock set up with the sand ocean. And there is one collective cage where you guys are all in. There's a bunch of cargo crates all over the place. And then kind of like as you leave away from this harbor is where all the houses are. And of course, the flashiest house is where Captain Carmichael stays. And it's like, it's not, you don't have to, you don't even have to guess. It's mm -hmm. clearly that house. And that is also where he's heading right now. So what would you like, what would you guys like to do? Well, we have to figure out where he's keeping everything. On his house. Right. Um, the lamp could probably be in his house. But Sandra probably isn't in his house. But as soon as you have the lamp, you can control Sandra. Is that what the G what, what she said? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so lamp we have to find first. Mm -hmm. I think Rooster will try to figure out how to break people out if you go get the lamp. Okay, I'll try and figure out if I can find the lamp. How would you like to do that? Uh, by going right up to Carmichael's house, I think. Okay. Someone calls behind you and says, Hey, Cap says you're supposed to help scrub the deck, new guy. I have business that the captain would be interested in hearing about. Why didn't you tell him a second ago? I'm slow. Apparently. Make it quick. <laughs> he heads over to Carmichael's house. You head up the hill, walking past a bit of a pirate village with big quotation marks. It's definitely just like, you know, these, these are a bunch of dudes just like build, <laughs> building some shacks. I mean, I kind of picture this as like almost like Disneyland level of like, we're pirates. Yeah. It's, You're it's, not wrong. It's kind of comically like this is what they think pirates are like. You're not wrong. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yo ho yo ho. there's definitely some yo ho's going on there's some songs being sung okay um and yeah eventually you reach up to the house the door's closed all right knock 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 what it's core go new, away new recruit you i have go away. i have a uh, business proposition for you another one you just sold yourself to me i have a better one 
I have an offer for you. One that I think you'll have a hard time turning down. Well then, come in. I hope you liked this episode of Fool's Gold Sands. If you'd like to see more of our stuff, like all the comics and character art and everything we're posting, you can go to foolsgold.fun slash sands to check it out there. If you'd like to support us, there's also a tip jar on the website. So go check it out and I'll see you next time.